our second example in the hydraulic design of a drop structure. An irrigation canal will be constructed to carry a flow rate of 100 cubic feet per second. The canal will have a trapezoidal cross section with two to one side slopes, a bottom width of five feet, and a roughness coefficient of 0 0.03. To avoid eroding the channel banks, the maximum permitted average velocity is three feet per second. The length of the canal is four miles and the average ground slope where the canal will be built is 0.6%. The initial design calls for a vertical drop of five feet per drop structure. The transition loss coefficient as the water flows from each drop structure into the trapezoidal channel is 0 0.75. Determine the total number and spacing of the drop structures. Analyze the outlet conditions. We'll begin by looking at the channel which connects between the drop structures. We will determine the bottom slope and the normal depth knowing that the maximum allowable average velocity is three feet per second. So in this case, the known information is Q equals 100 cubic feet per second. The bottom width of the trapezoid is five feet. The side slope is two. The roughness is 0 0.03. And the velocity is three feet per second. Then you can calculate the normal depth of 3.02 feet. The fruit number at the normal depth of being 0.38 and the slope in which the velocity then would be equal to three feet per second. So there's way too many decimal places, but I just thought I'd show you the entire number. These quantities are calculated from the lingo file, the drop structure channel S0 and YN.LG4. Also, this particular lingo file will calculate the head loss to the channel slope and then the ground slope overall head loss. So if you subtract those, you get the head loss required in the drop structures. Now, if we take the information the S0, which we just calculated, and we put that into the drop structure lingo file that we used previously, and now rename it to example two, these are the knowns. Q is equal to 100 CFLs. Delta Z0 is five feet. B is equal to five feet, which would be the width of the drop structure. L equals four miles. The bottom slope of the constructed channel, S0, would be 0 0.0016735. The bottom slope of the ground is 0 0.006. And then using figure 6-17, have a first estimate of E2 divided by YC equals 2.2. Calculated from the lingo file. The critical depth coming into the drop structure is 2.32 feet. The initial energy is 8.4 feet. The energy as it leaves is 5.1 feet. The change of the energy is 3.38 feet. That's how much is lost per drop structure. This gives us a number of drop structures to be 27.05. The length of the drop structure required for the drop, LD, equals 20.1 feet. Now the length of the drop structure required for the jump, according to the theory, is 1.2 feet, and to the lab is 23.7 feet. So you can see that the theory in this case doesn't do very well in terms of predicting the length required for the hydraulic jump to develop. 
So in this case, you would take the length based on the laboratory results and so call the overall length of the drop structure LB is equal to 43.8 feet. The program also calculates the depth Y1, which would be at the bottom of the drop. And then it calculates Y2, both on the theory and the results of the experiments. So you can see the Y2A would be very impossible. So the Y2B would be the what we consider to be the accepted depth of the water as it's leaving the drop structure at the downstream end. So if we look at the downstream end, we have the rectangular drop structure going into the trapezoidal channel. The vertical step up is Y2 over 6, and Y3 would be equal to the normal depth. We're in a situation of rapidly varied flow. We're going to use the energy equation with the abrupt subcritical flow expansion loss coefficient of 0.75. We would then use the lingo file that I've developed to analyze the downstream energy. The knowns, Q equals 100 CFS, B equals 5 feet. V sub n in the channel is equal to 3 feet. Y sub n in the channel is 3.2 feet. I believe that should be 3.02 feet. K sub L, the loss coefficient is 0 0.75. The terms that are calculated then are V2 is the velocity of the water as it's exiting the drop structure. Y2 would be the depth as it's exiting the drop structure. H sub L would be the head loss as it exits. And E2 would be the energy right before it exits. So let's interpret the results. According to the energy analysis, the minimum depth required for this to successfully operate would be 3.52 feet. The available depth from the drop structure analysis is 4.51 feet. So that will be perfectly suitable. The minimum energy required based on the energy analysis is 4.02 feet and the available energy is 5.10 feet. So therefore, the water exiting the drop structure has sufficient depth and energy so that the hydraulic jump will be open and not submerged. The downstream conditions will not influence the performance of the drop structure. As usual, the concluding step is to prepare a comprehensive sketch of what's showing going on. So you can see the Y2, based on the condition of the hydraulic jump, and the vertical step would go up to 4.5 feet. It would then drop down as it's exiting the drop structure to match the normal depth in the channel of 3.02 feet. The height of the step, Y2 over 6, would be 0 0.75 feet, and Y1, the depth of flow right before the hydraulic jump, would be 1 foot. These would be the expected drop structure outlet conditions.